okay? I'm using my headphones um, so that hopefully you guys can't hear my husband playing Destiny in the background. So if you hear war sounds, that's why. <laughs> so don't be alarmed. Um, okay, so I actually do, I really like to make slides for calls. So I made you guys some slides. So if you don't mind, I'm gonna hop over to the screen share. Uh, so give me just a second to do it. And then if someone can give me a thumbs up when you can see my screen so I can see that you guys got it. Okay. Okay, so today I, hang on one second. What, babe? Well, I don't know what to tell you. There's nowhere else to go in the house. Um, sorry, my guy's guy friends don't like that they can hear me while he's playing video games. Um, okay, so... Uh, Morgan asked me to talk to you guys, and I'm so flattered. Thank you guys for having me. Um, and she was, you know, we were trying to come up with ideas for um, what to talk about because it always seems so hard to come up with an idea out of nowhere. And she said, what about some of, you know, the thing, some of the things you've learned, the lessons you've learned that have helped you um, over the last year? I thought that was such a good idea because – like Morgan said, we started about the same time. So both of us started in the fall of 2013. So this last year, 2014, I kind of consider that like my first full year of coaching. Because before that, you know, I was just kind of doing challenge groups and um, participating myself. Because when I started, I, um, I had a lot of weight to lose. So and then it was the holiday season. So last year was my whole first year. And I felt like in last year, I really learned just a ton, a ton, a ton. And I grew a lot as just a person and my business grew a lot. Um, so I was trying to come up with five lessons that I could share with you guys, um, that I learned the hard way so that you guys don't have to learn them the hard way. You can just learn from my mistakes and avoid them altogether. Well, first I just figured I'd introduce myself in case some of you guys don't know me. Um, I'm Becca, Becca Robinson. And, um, these are a few of my favorite things. Um, working towards my fittest self, uh, which is such a funny thing for me to say because I don't really love working out all that much and I never have. Um, so I almost feel like a fraud as a beach buddy coach to be like, hi, I'm a beach buddy coach who hates working out, but it's true. Um, so I hate cardio. I'm like the person that hides at summit when they're doing like cardio workouts at 6am, but I love other stuff that's challenging. So like I love yoga and I love, um, like Pio for example and stuff like that. So I, I like health and nutrition and, and since I've been on this journey, I have a newfound love for just seeing what my body can do in general. So at this point I've lost a little bit over 75 pounds from when I started. So you can kind of see, I put up a transformation photo so you can kind of see the photo on the left, um, and then kind of a more recent one. And then that in the middle is my little boy, Cadence, and my husband, Nate. Um, and then on the right is just a picture of me. I have a yoga paddle board, so I can actually go out and do stuff on it. It's like super balanced. So I'm always out. I live in Central Florida, and we just have tons and tons and tons of lakes. So I'm always out on that. Um, okay, so let me jump right in. Of five lessons that I learned the hard way. Uh, number one, no one cares unless you do. So what I mean by this is not necessarily like all your family and friends, but your team and even the people following you on social media. So if you're a coach and you don't care about what you're doing that much or you don't care. Oh, Becca, sorry, I accidentally muted you. Can you just unmute yourself? Sorry. Sorry, somebody was making noise and I meant to go mute them. That's okay. Um, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. So what I mean by this is that until you really, really, really care enough about your own fitness journey and your own um, story and then helping other people the same way, no one else is going to care that same way. So if you're trying to build a team and you're, you know, kind of wondering like, why don't I have any rock stars? Why are my challengers falling off? Well, it may be time for you to kind of look at yourself and say, well, am I being the leader? Am I the one that's leading by example, leading from the front? That's something that my team hears me say like, 
probably so much that they're sick of it. Am I leading from the front? Because that's what a real leader does. They get down and right in there with everybody else and they take the reins and they show everybody exactly what to be doing. Or am I being more of a boss? Am I sitting behind my computer and telling my team and my challengers what they need to do, but not actually doing it myself? If you're not doing the three vital behaviors every day, then you're a boss. You're not a leader. And you're never going to see your business move to that next level, that, that level of success that so many of us have in our head, that we have this vision this vision for that we've, you know, we've gotten so excited because of the possibilities, but you're just going to kind of create basically a boundary for yourself. Like you're standing in your own way. So you have to care the most. And when you care the most and you lead from that, from that point in the front, people will follow you. Your team will follow you. Your challengers will follow you. I participate in all my challenge groups as much for me as for my team and my challengers. I mean, coaching, I became a coach partly because I knew it would keep me accountable. I, if I hadn't become a coach, full disclosure, I probably would have done an, one round of T25 after I finished that challenge group, and I probably would have gained all the way back by now because I would have just stopped doing stuff. I would have fallen back into those old habits. It's so easy to do. I mean, all of us know how easy that is to do. And But being a coach keeps me accountable because I can't go into my challenge group and say, you guys got to make it work. You got to make time. You got to make it happen. You got to prioritize your health and fitness if I'm not doing it because then I feel like a fraud. And if I can't show progress photos for myself, that means I'm not doing the three vital behaviors. That means I'm not working on myself. And so that keeps me accountable too. Same with my team. I'm, I have, and any of my team members on here are probably going to laugh when I say this, but I have like a, like a secret goal to never let anyone on my team out success club me because I always want to be leading from the front. Like I don't want anybody on my team to have more points than me because it means that I wasn't leading more from the front than that person was that month. And it's so silly and I'm kind of competitive, but that's like the mentality. I never ask my coaches to share a before and after if I'm not willing to share it or to share their story if I'm not willing to share mine first. And that was something that I've always kind of known in my head, you know, but like moving something that those 13 inches from your head to your heart is like sometimes a lifetime's worth of work. So it wasn't until I started really moving that understanding from my head to my heart and starting to actually use it in my day to day that I really saw my challengers just come to life and my team just start to flourish because I was down in the trenches with them and they knew that I was there and they knew that I was doing it. And so they could rally, you know, with me, not just listening to me barking orders and barking advice at them from, you know, my position up high. The second thing that I learned, and this was one that was kind of a rude awakening to me, is that you have to become your own hero. So you guys know that I'm part of the Bombshell Dynasty, just like Morgan, and Morgan and I are both personally sponsored coaches of Lindsay Matway. But the year that we signed on was the year Lindsay was top coach, and that is a busy year. Like signing up under a top coach you may think that you've got like this cush situation, but in all actuality, like they are busy. They are not going to baby you. Top coaches are not going to coddle you. They're not going to let you use them as a crutch. They're going to give you incredible tools and incredible advice and mentorship, but you really have to be the one that drives your own bus. And I just had this misconception that Lindsay was going to baby me because like, that's just what I thought. And so when I, got going and that wasn't the case that I kind of had to like snap out of it a little bit because I was starting to use the bombshell dynasty as a crutch. I was starting in my head, not even really out in life yet, but just in my head, I was thinking, well, I'm the personally sponsored coach of the top coach. So of course everything's going to be fine for me, but like, no, I still have to do the same amount of work as anybody who signs up under anybody. It doesn't matter. We're all, we all start at zero. We all have to build the same way. So your upline is not an insurance policy. That's something that I had to learn. So being part of Morgan's team, being part of the bombshell dynasty, being part of team BTFP, it's not an insurance policy that guarantees your success. You still have to be the one that does the stuff day in and day out. And yes, it's a huge blessing to have a great team and a great upline because you have support where other people might not have support. You have opportunities for training and to be part of mastermind groups that other people don't have that, those same access to. So that's a huge blessing, but it's not a guaranteed insurance policy. And then your coaches are not your holy grail. This is something that I also had to learn really, really early on. My team, as it is now, the only people who are still part of my team that were part of my team when I started are my mom and my husband, and I pretty much forced them to be involved. And one discount coach 
who signed up with me my second month as a coach and remained a discount coach until the last couple of months when she actually started working. Everybody else is, is new. So none of the people that I signed on in the beginning that told me that they were going to be rock stars, they were going to be top 10 coaches, they were all in no matter what, none of them are still here. And for me, that was really hard. I actually built to diamond really quickly. I built to diamond in 70 days, which was in October. And I lost diamond over the holidays because everybody dropped out. And it took me until almost the success club trip to get it back. And that was really hard for me because I basically had to rebuild from scratch. The only people I still had were my mom and my husband and my one discount coach that's still around. I pretty much built a diamond twice in six months, which is a little bit crazy. But that was a huge awakening for me. Your coaches are not your holy grail. When you find someone that you think is going to be incredible and you like hold on to them with both your fists like so tight because you're like, this is going to be my first star diamonds like or this is going to be who gets me to premiere or even this is going to be who gets me to elite maybe you have five people in your head and you're like plotting out this course for them to be rock stars and they may not be on that same trajectory and you're just setting yourself up for disappointment but also for a missed opportunity because if you're putting all your eggs in their basket you're not paying attention to what else is going on around you who else maybe is ready to be mentored by you or who else you could bring in like you don't see the other possibilities so you have to remember that your coaches aren't going to save your business you can't put your success or failure on them and you can't get mad at them if they don't you know, live up to what they originally said or even live up to what you what hopes you had for them it's one of the most frustrating parts of this job is seeing the potential in someone and seeing them not meet it just for whatever reasons. Like we sit on the other side of our computer and we're like, you could be amazing. Why don't you see it? And they just don't see it sometimes. And there's nothing we can do. And we have to remember that it's not them. Like they are not who's going to make our success. But then conversely, here's the good news. They're not going to break your success either. If someone that you really had a lot of hope for falls out, your business isn't over. Like you can keep going. So it's good and kind of sometimes frustrating. And the only thing you can do is control the controllable. So you can't control what your coaches do or don't do. You can't control what your grand coaches and great grand coaches do or don't do. You can try to build for volume. You can try to build for rank. You can do all these things. But when it comes down to it, the only things you can control are the controllable. And that is yourself and your three vital behaviors and what you're sharing and what you're doing day to day, just you. And so when I kind of realized these things that, you know, I couldn't use my upline as a crutch, I couldn't, you know, put all of my stake in just the people that I thought were going to be, you know, the people to help me, you know, pay off our debt or to build our income or to all these different things. And when I focused on controlling the controllable, which for me is my three vital behaviors and the stuff that I share on social media and like having, you know, conversations with people. Those are the things I can control in a day. When I started to really focus on those things, my business really started to grow because we have to let the other stuff go. You'll drive yourself crazy. You'll stress yourself out. It's not worth it. You have to only focus on what you can control. Okay, next. And this one's a little tongue in cheek. Um, one of the things that I learned the hard way is that you have to own your own ish. So it doesn't matter who you are as long as you own that. Um, and I have this up here, it's kind of a joke. Like I don't, I don't really think that I'm like so different from them. But um, one of the lessons that I learned uh, was that I just had to stop trying to fit into what I thought a bombshell dynasty coach looked like and I could just be myself. So I always perceived these top coaches as like beautiful, put together, blonde bombshells. Like they always have their hair and makeup done and they always are dressed so nice and like, on and on and on. And I'm much more of this like kind of bohemian. My hair is pretty much always like messy. And like I don't love fitness as you can see from this photo. And like, I'm just not, I'm just not that person. So for me, there was a little bit of a disconnect as a new coach trying to figure out like, well, how do I be like the brunette Lindsay Matway? But I can't be the brunette Lindsay Matway because I'm not Lindsay Matway. I have to be Becca Robinson. And so once I figured out how to, how to own who I was and to be okay with that, I was really freed up to be creative and to let people connect with me instead of who I was trying to portray myself as. And that makes you attract people who are, who are really what you want because like attracts like. And if you're putting out something that's a fake front from what you want, you're going to be attracting people that are fake friends for what they are. And then you're not going to mesh. They're not going to be able to do the things that they need to do to be successful. If you're putting out an authentic 
version of yourself where people can really see who you, who you are, the good, the bad, the messy, like when you can't figure out how to church wrap <laughs> in 21 day mix extreme, like me, if you put that stuff out, you'll get people back. Like those pictures attract people to me that are similar, that don't take fitness too seriously, that are okay. Like not understanding how to church wrap the first time and having to Google it on your phone while you're trying to do your workout. Like that is who I'm trying to attract. I'm trying to attract people who are relaxed, who are kind of go with the flow. Like I don't want super high maintenance people on my team because I'm not super high maintenance and I'll be a horrible leader for them. <laughs> They're going to like get so frustrated with me. And so you don't have to be afraid to be different. If you're different from Morgan, that's not a bad thing at all. If you're not as organized or, you know, like as regimented as somebody else, it doesn't matter. So you don't, there's not one right way to be a coach. There's not one right way to be a successful coach. And this was a quote that um, one of my success partners, Meredith, told me she's one of the coaches um, on team set your soul on fire. I don't know if you follow her, Meredith, you know, you know anyway, this was a quote that she told me once and I loved it. She said, people follow you because they are like you or because they want to be like you. And so when it comes to the social media and sharing a story that's not really you because you're not going to be getting the right people to be paying attention. People are following you because they, they feel like they can connect with you because they're like you or because some part of them wants to be like some part of you. And that's a beautiful thing because that's what we do as coaches, right? We inspire people to be better. We, we show them parts of ourselves and people look at us just like mirrors and they say, oh my gosh, I can see myself like that. I could see myself like this. I could see myself doing that. I could see myself getting out of debt like this. And we basically mirror back to them the potential in themselves. And that is what draws people to us. We're just big mirrors. And so you have to own who you really are or else it's basically like showing people a clouded mirror. They're not going to be able to really see and really connect. And once I really just let go of feeling like I had to look a certain way or be a certain way just to be, just because I was Lindsay's coach or just because I was, I was in the bombshell dynasty, then I was really freed up to, to connect with people in a way that was much more authentic and organic for me. Um, this is actually four. <laughs> okay. One, another lesson I learned the hard way is that without the ashes, a phoenix is just a boring old bird. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with, you know, phoenix birds. They're basically a mythological creature that bursts into flames and dies and then rises from its own ashes even more beautiful than before. And so the metaphor is just that without having to go through those difficult things that you feel like are going to break you and having to come back out from like pull yourself back out of the ashes of that, you're just a bird. Like you're not nearly as cool as this beautiful, fiery, like mythical creature, right? Like you don't have that same power, that same wow factor. Think of all the epic stories that you've ever heard. The ones that like make you cry, that move you. They're not like this person was going along in their life and everything was great. The end. Like that's not how those stories go. The main character has some sort of crazy struggle and they get to a breaking point where you don't know if they're going to make it or not. And at the last second they pull through and there's an amazing resolution. And that's, those are the stories we're drawn to as humans, you know, like that's what really inspires us. So don't think that your ashes are something that you need to hide or that if you're stuck in this, oops, sorry, if you're stuck in the spot of your life where, you know, like everything's not perfect, that you can't be a successful coach or that you need to have some sort of background or some sort of story to be a successful coach. So I wrote these things down because I hear stories all the time from coaches who, you know, like had really, really, really rough lives. I mean, like they came out of crazy situations and they turned it around and it's hugely inspiring. And I was like, I'm not really like that. I don't really have a crazy backstory where I like struggled and struggled and struggled. And I was in, you know, a million dollars worth of debt and then I paid it all off. And like, I don't have that story. I was in like a little teeny amount of debt, but like I got a scholarship for school. So that wasn't a big deal. And you know, like, I ran a successful business before doing this. So it's not like I was like homeless and broke. I mean, like I didn't really have that, but there are still a lot of really difficult things I've gone through in my life that you would think would maybe not make me qualified to do this job. 
for example, I changed my major like 10 times. My degree is in psychology. And the only reason that I have a degree in psychology is because I wanted to get out of school so bad that I just picked a major that had the least amount of math. And that was psychology. <laughs> I actually do enjoy it. So that was kind of a win-win. But I knew that I never wanted to be a psychologist. I didn't want to be a counselor. I just wanted to get a degree and be done with school. I actually married my high school sweetheart and very quickly thereafter got divorced. So I was a divorcee at 21. I mean, that's not really like speaking highly of, of me for most people's opinions of, you know, success. I've struggled with generalized anxiety all of my life since I was a little, little, little kid. And it is sometimes very crippling. And since getting healthy, it has helped a ton. And since drinking Shakeology every day with all the adaptogens that help your body deal with that kind of stuff, I've really been able to kind of level out. But when I was really unhealthy, I would just like go up and down and up and down and it would be crazy. I've actually never had a real job. This is the first time in my life as a Beachbody coach that I've gotten a paycheck on the same day every day of a week consistently, um, which is a little bit crazy for me that Beachbody is like my realest job that I've ever had. But um, I have been self-employed my whole life. So it's not like I have a lot of on-the-job training in leadership or in leading a team or in fitness or anything. Everything I've ever done, I've been self-taught. I mean, my psychology degree, I don't use it. I joke that I use it with coaching and stuff because I'm always like trying to help people work through stuff. But I mean, that's just kind of a joke. I'm not really using it. Um, I have family members with mental illness and, and cancer. So that's a stress. Like all of us, we think that, you know, we're the only ones going through stuff. Just because you don't see someone talking publicly about it doesn't mean other people aren't going through hard stuff too. And just because you're going through hard stuff doesn't mean that you can't still be building something good at the same time. You know, you don't have to like shut everything down. You know, my husband and I have no family in, help, in town to help us with our son. So everything that we do, um, we pretty much have to figure out a way to watch him ourselves or figure out a way to make it work with him around or pay a babysitter crap tons of money to watch him for us while we do it. Um, and when I started, I had 70 pounds to lose. So I have so many people tell me they don't think that they can be a successful coach because um, they're, they don't have the right body type or they, have, they can't start coaching until after they've lost all the weight. I started coaching two weeks into it and I earned the success club trip last year in those first four months of coaching. So while I was still really, really overweight, you can totally do it because what you do as a coach is not show people a perfect body and tell them how to get there. What you do as a coach is show them a person who is a real human, who is doing something that is good for them, that makes them feel good. And then you show them how to do that for themselves. So it really doesn't matter where you are in your life. As long as you have a desire to do that for yourself and for other people, you can be successful. And then as a coach, I failed super publicly with my goals for last year. I told everybody I was going to be an elite coach and I failed at that. And I failed at some income goals that I told everybody, all the coaches I knew, all my friends, um, all my success partners. And that was hard. That's a struggle because I'm really competitive. So all of those things could be, you know, could be struggles, could be flames and ashes. But even with all of that, I still qualified for premier for the year and I still got to a six figure income in 18 months. And I still got to top 50 in the company in 18 months. So all of those things that you could say were such you know, hindrances or such struggles, they didn't stop me from doing those things and they don't have to stop you. If you have things that are like that on the list, you don't have to be ashamed of them or afraid of them or think that they disqualify you from success because they absolutely don't. In fact, it's the opposite. Without struggle, there's really no growth. So hopefully you guys recognize all of these people, but these are people who are hugely successful and famous who changed the world, who had some pretty big struggles. Oprah was told that she wasn't right for TV. Like, quote, unquote, you are not right for TV. Now, she could have let that break her and said, I'm not right for TV. Like, black women don't succeed in this industry right now. Like, I just, I'm not going to be able to have a voice. But did she let that happen? No. And look what happened. She changed the world. She changed broadcasting. And she's created basically an empire and inspired tons of women of all different races, all different ages. Doesn't And even guys, too. Like, everybody has some sort of thing that they have probably been inspired by from Oprah. Babe Ruth had 1,330 strikeouts, but that's not what he's known for. I mean, that is like a crap ton of strikeouts, you guys. And imagine Babe Ruth going up to the plate, being known for hitting home runs and striking out. Like, do you think he threw his bat down and was like, 
fuck baseball. I'm done with this. Like, this is too embarrassing that I struck out. Like I'm never going to do it again. No, because the next time he hit a home run and he became known for that. Dude's got a candy bar named after him. That's success. Steven Spielberg, legendary director, right? He is just a crazy genius. Like the movies that he makes that starts in his head, you guys. And then he figures out a way to make that into something that we can see we can see and experience and tell us a story. And we watch the things that he took out of his imagination and told people what to do and told people exactly what lighting and what shots and what angles. He basically creates these entire worlds and puts us in it and they make us feel things. Like they make us cry or they make us laugh or they make us have happy memories and they like bring stories to life inside of us. He has suffered from dyslexia his whole life. Does that stop him from reading screenplays and from getting things accomplished? No. And last, Steve Jobs was fired from the company he founded. Steve Jobs was fired from Apple computers way back before the iPad, before the iPad, before the iPod, before the iPhone, all that kind of stuff. They fired him. Could you imagine that? Like the company that you literally grew from your garage and they turn around and kick you to the curb. He came back and he created the iPod, which literally changed the world of technology as we know it like that was a that was a turning point in technology in companies in customer service in all of it like that was a just a moment in history and he did that come bouncing back from a struggle so without the struggle in the story there's no growth without the conflict there's no resolution you can't have it so for you to have this incredible success story you're going to go through some struggle it's almost a guarantee it's like a pendulum a pendulum can't swing to the right really far unless it swings to the left really far you know, like your success, if you only want this much struggle, your success can only be this far. But if you're willing to have this much struggle, your success can go back this way too. It's just kind of the laws of the universe. Another lesson that I learned that has to do with this is you push through your struggle with personal development. But I know that you hear this all the time. The point that I want to get through to you guys is personal development, personal for you. You don't have to read the same book that everybody else is reading. Look at these books that I read. The only one you guys have probably ever heard of is You Are About Us because every single coach and their mom is reading it right now. These other books you've probably not heard of because they're really obscure and kind of woo-woo, but they were for me. I chose them because they had topics that were important to me to get me through something that I was going through. It has nothing to do with impressing other coaches or trying to be part of the personal development club. It doesn't matter. Your personal developments are to help you get through whatever you're doing to help you work on whatever you need help on if you guys ever want to see my books I have them up on Pinterest I have a reading list where I pin books that I want to read or that I have read so if you guys ever want to see the all the weird books that I'm reading for inspiration you can go look but I want you guys to really you know pick out stuff that is important to you if you don't like um, oh what's the the guy that everybody the oh his name the author the five, five. laws of leadership guy John C. Maxwell. Yeah, if you don't like John C. Maxwell, like I don't like John C. Maxwell, then don't read John C. Maxwell. Like why torture yourself with personal development? It's supposed to be something you enjoy, right? Like I, I love his principles. I will Google quotes by him all day long, but reading a book by him puts me to sleep in three minutes. Like I can't help it. I think he's brilliant, but I don't know what it is about his writing style. I just can't do it. I need books that are more like – like funny, like you are a badass, it's kind of funny, or they're like more like soul driven, like the soul mind connection. Like that's what I, at least at this stage of my life, that's what's really pulling me in. So that's what the dark side of the light chasers, um, just to tell you guys what it's about. It's basically about, it's insane. It was like as impactful to me this year as the slide edge was my first year in coaching, but it's basically about owning who, uh, who you are, all of you. So all of us have shadowy parts of ourselves and all of us have bright parts of ourselves. It's just how the world works. And it just talks about how if you don't own all of, if you don't investigate and own all the shadowy parts of yourself, that they're going to hinder you from being the best bright parts of yourself. And the, there's a quote that she says all the time, she says, what you don't own owns you. And I loved it because it was so true to me. If you're always trying to hide the fact that you're insecure, those insecurities are gonna own you. If you're always trying to hide the fact that you're scared or that um, you know you have anxiety, that anxiety is gonna overwhelm you. If you're always trying to hide the fact that you're jealous, jealousy is gonna overwhelm you. You have to just say, yeah, I'm jealous sometimes. It's like, it's part of who I am, it's not a great part, but I deal with it. And here's how I use that jealousy to fuel me towards other things. I use that to inspire me to, to you know, maybe see how I could work a little harder or more effectively or whatever. So that's what that book's about. It's really good. And Women Who Run With Wolves is just like 
I haven't, I haven't finished it yet, so I can't give you like a full explanation other than to just say it's brilliant. It's basically just talking about the wild woman archetype, which is just like really powerful women through old like legends and fables and all kinds of stuff in this archetype of like who is this woman that we've lost over time and how do we like get back to to being more like that it's brilliant so if you like that kind of stuff those books are great but you don't have to read those because your personal development is personal to you so pick whatever it is that is going to help you it doesn't matter you don't have to be embarrassed by it um and then personal development is such an easy way to come up with social media content. Like I have a little notebook as I'm reading and I write down quotes that I think are going to be great to use on Instagram or Facebook for a caption for a photo. And that's like instant content, right? As soon as I need something, I just open my notebook. I've got pages and pages and pages of ideas. And that was no extra work. So personal development, double whammy, you guys. Um, so that was the last lesson. And I just wanted to show you this because um, Morgan said that you guys would like to see it. Um, I made this for my team. And I guess my last lesson, and I didn't have to learn this the hard way, thankfully, and hopefully you won't either, is don't quit before your breakthrough. Um, so Morgan can tell you, because she's been one of my success partners from the very beginning, how much I complained and complained and complained to everybody that was my success partners and to Lindsay about how slow my income growth was last year because I wanted to be at a certain spot and I wasn't there and I felt like it was taking me a million years to get there. And financially for my family, we really needed to be there. And so there was that extra pressure and that extra stress and I couldn't control it, you know, that was before I started focusing on controlling the controllable. So it was just stressing me out because I felt powerless to change anything. But I didn't quit and I kept going. And so I wanted to show you guys, my first paycheck of April is on the left side and that's my business center and my husband's business center and my total was $302.94. I was a diamond coach or at least in and out of rank. I had enough to be a diamond. So I was right about at that level. Um, but I mean, you guys know diamond coaches income can range really, really drastically depending on the team under them. So for me, that was a struggle because at that point I was just starting to get my footing with rebuilding my team with new people, but they hadn't really taken off yet. My first paycheck of April of this year, you can see my first business center, my husband's business center, and I was able to open a second business center um, a couple months ago. And I made just under $3,000, which is just under a 900% raise, which is just like flabbergasting to me because I struggled so hard to get to a consistent $1,000 a week. I literally thought it was going to break me. I would complain to Morgan all the time. Like, how is everybody hitting this but me? I don't understand what I'm doing wrong. Like, what do I need to be doing differently? And everybody was like, just keep doing the three vital behaviors. There's really nothing else you can do. And I would get so mad because I thought that was the most frustrating advice ever. Because when you're doing the three vital behaviors and nothing's happening, it doesn't seem very helpful for people to tell you to do the three vital behaviors. But it really is just a time thing, you guys. You have to you have to stick it out. The, the difference between you and Lindsay Matway is that she's been doing this for years longer than you. And that's pretty much it. Like there's really nothing else. You have to just stick it out. You can't quit before that happens because this, all of network marketing, it's just a numbers game. Like you just have to have enough people and you have to stay in it long enough for those people to learn the ropes and to get their footing and to get their groove and all that kind of stuff. You can't think it's going to happen, you know, in a month or in two months or six months even sometimes. So if I can tell you one last thing that I don't want you to learn the hard way, and luckily I didn't have to learn it the hard way because that would have been very sad, is, I mean, imagine if I had quit like November of last year, right? I, when I would have missed out on all of the New Year's kind of boom, the resolution effect you hear everybody talking about, and I wouldn't have gotten to this point. Um, so if you're feeling that right now, let me just encourage you, do not quit before your breakthrough. It will come if you stick with it and you keep trying and you keep doing those three vital behaviors and you keep working on yourself, and worst case scenario, a couple of months from now, maybe you're still not at that goal, but you're healthier, and you're happier, and through personal development, you've grown as a person, and you've made all these new friends, and you know, you're working towards other goals, and that was kind of the perspective shift I had to have. I, my husband was like, hun, we've paid off all of our debt, like, we've been able to do all this stuff, you lost 70 pounds, like, you can't be upset about this, <laughs> so I was like, you're right, I shouldn't be upset about this, because worst case scenario isn't even that bad, you know, it's just, 
you know, we put our own goals and our own timelines on ourselves and then that can be difficult. Um, okay, so that's all I had to say. I wanted to throw this up in case any of you guys wanted to stay in touch with me or if you had questions that, you know, you wanted to message me later, here's ways that you can find me. Um, the best ones are Facebook and Instagram because I'm there the most, but those are the different places. So thank you guys for having me. I hope that something gave you guys some ideas or inspiration or encouragement. Oops, let me stop the share. Ah, uh, that was absolutely awesome. Um, seriously, Becky, you blow my mind every time we chat. Um, we're, we're so like compatible, but so different at the same time. And that's what I love. And if you guys haven't experienced it already, um, like Becca said, she lives in Florida. I live in little old Melville, Saskatchewan. And for some reason, we cross paths online and fell in love with each other. I've been to her house. I've slept over. Um, her husband's cooked me food. Like, that's also what I love about this business. You can just meet the awesomest people ever. Like you guys, I feel like I have no friends in Melville, Saskatchewan, but online I have so many friends. It's just awesome. Um, so like Becca said, definitely follow her. She is the coolest pages ever. And I'm just so happy her business has exploded. And I didn't mind you complaining to me at all. <laughs> I just soaked it in. I knew it was going to happen for you. And um, just thank you so, so much for sharing this with us. And um, just unbelievable. And I hope all of you guys took some info out of this. I know I did. And I'm going to buy that Dark Side of the Light Chasers book on Amazon tonight. And, um, you know, just keep up the amazing work. And I just can't believe your transformation still every time you show that. <laughs> All right, um, we are going to wrap up. I am my diamonds. Um, we're having diamond date night. So if you want to stay on the line while everybody else logs off, we're going to have our diamond date night quick. And um, thank you again, Becca. This is going to be recorded if you want to re-listen to it or just look at her beautiful slides. I'm going to upload it to YouTube as well. So have a wonderful night, everybody, and we will talk soon. Love y'all. Ruby, it's diamond date night. <laughs> She's jacked. <laughs> okay, I guess I can stop recording this now. Whoops. Oh, yeah. <laughs>